Greetings, and thank you for spending some time with us. I'm your show host, Pastor Jeff. Before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to our viewers in Tennessee, Virginia and West Virginia. I also like to give a shout out to Pastor John. I thank God for you, Pastor. Today's show, I'm so excited. World Relief is in the house. We're going to have a conversation with Travis, Travis Trice, who is a church relation for World Relief. So friends and family, don't go anywhere. We're going to be talking about refugees and immigrants. Yes, refugees and immigrants. We'll be right back with more of the Jeffrey B. Valentine Show. to the show. I'm your show host, Pastor Jeff, my friend, my brother, Travis Trice. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks yes, for sir. having me. Travis is from uh, World Relief Church Relation. Uh, he's going to be spending some time with us a couple weeks. Um, here on the program, I'm excited, Travis. People uh, really is confused about the refugees and mm -hmm. immigrants and mm -hmm. And you know, the thing that's going in the political world, world mm -hmm. about um, re refugees and immigrants, am right. I right? Mm -hmm. But before we get started, let's talk about you, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. First day of school. Uh, <laughs> as a dad, I survived. So uh, uh, You and I both? Yeah, that's right. Traffic was off the chain. Woo! <laughs> Jacksonville. Gotta love it, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how long you been with World Relief? I've been with World Relief for about four years uh, as an employee and volunteering a total of about six years now. And, uh, and it's blessed me every day that I've been there. Um, I started out as a youth pastor here in the city uh, at Calvary Worship Center. Spent about five, uh, five years there pastoring youth. And um, God put it on my heart to show my students uh, that there is a whole world out there with people, uh, a lot of different kind of people, uh, a lot of different places in life. And, uh, you know, as a, as a youth myself, what really impacted me for the Lord was when I went on my first missions trip. And I remember coming back, and I wasn't the same. Uh, still, I have not uh, gone back to how I was. Uh, the missions trip really rocked me. Uh, and, uh, and Jesus got a hold of my heart on that trip, and I wanted the same thing for my students. So I, I said, you know, every year we're going to go on a missions trip. And we did. We went, uh, you know, to, uh, I remember we went to Nicaragua and had an incredible time there. Wow. But um, when, I, when we came back, my pastor came and he sat me down and, and some parents had been talking, uh, rightfully so, now <laughs> as a parent myself. And they said, these mission trips get expensive, <laughs> don't they? I mean, you know, if you want to go to Africa, I just went a few years ago, and, you know, you're talking about four or $5,000 uh, per, per trip. Per, yeah, per, oh, person. per person. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then you get a team of 20 together, and you do the math. It, it adds up. And so uh, I had to think, you know, well, what's, what's something uh, feasible that still has the same impact? And that's when I began to discover uh, what and who World Relief is here in the city of Jacksonville. Wow, wow. Well, one thing about this particular program, the Jeffrey B. Valentine Show, and our ministry, JBV Ministry, we partner up. Um, we are also in the mission field in Haiti mm -hmm. and in Israel. Mm -hmm. But I, as I was sharing with you when we, you know, when we talked a couple of weeks or a month ago, yep. how I believe that God wanted us to be a part of our ministry and show. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife did an outstanding job when she made that relationship that connection with you guys. She, she did. actually yeah. did the research for us and for our ministry. Hey, babe, how you doing? I thank God for you. <laughs> but what is World Relief? What is it? World Relief, uh, it's a lot is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a international humanitarian organization. Uh, it is also the, the, uh, the arm of the NAE. The NAE is the National Association of evangelicals. It's the humanitarian arm of that organization. 
So, you know, whether we're talking to Baptists, Methodists, uh, Pentecostals, non-denominations, um, you know, there's the whole evangelical tree. Um, we are, you know, our goal is to partner with these churches, with these denominations, and serve people not only in the U.S., but all around the, all around the globe. Uh, World Relief uh, serves around 2.8 million people uh, annually. 2.8 million. Yeah. We're on four continents. Um, it, it's always increasing, but I believe we're at about uh, 26, 27 different countries right now. Um, and there's just a lot going on behind the scenes in World Relief. I remember when I did go to Africa, I went mm -hmm. to Zambia, and I, um, I got to see this, uh, this ministry. I didn't go with World Relief. I went with another organization just uh, to kind of, you know, go and be on a mission on the missions field, like I like to do every few years. But I went, and I saw this ministry called Zambia Works, and uh, began to talk with them. and And they said, "Oh yeah, you know, um, you know, we're doing HIV/AIDS treatment, we're doing uh, microfinance, you know, all yeah. these um, very empowering ministries that go on overseas." And I was talking to this gentleman, and he said, "Yeah, you know this." This group came in and got us started. They um, they set us up. They they uh, they set up our infrastructure. Or they organized us, and then they took their hands off and let us, you know, run this ministry. And I said, "What wow. ministry was that?" And he said, "World Relief." <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, and that's really the heart of World Relief. And that's really why I respect the organization and why I'm so happy there. Um, we're not going around the world to wave our flag or our banner. We're here to represent Christ and Him crucified. And we believe that the local church, the local church, is the answer to the world's problems. Because within the local church, you're going to find people who are, you know, who are full of Christ, That's who are full church. of His Holy Spirit. And uh, they are equipped to deal with any, any issue in this world. So if you're in Kenya, there's a drought in Kenya. And World Relief is not only digging wells but we're planting churches near those wells uh, with local pastors. Yeah. And we're seeing, you know, we're seeing uh, spiritual water and physical water, two needs being met. Uh, and then if you're in the U.S., you might say, well, what's the need in the U.S.? Well, we have uh, thousands and thousands of refugees coming to the U.S. every year. And we believe that the local church has a responsibility to minister to these people, these uh, victims of war. Uh, these people who have fled for their life. It's important to know that uh, when we're talking about who a refugee is, yes, they're an immigrant, but they are someone who has fled persecution, okay, now real persecution. Um, okay, I, I want to ask you this question after this one. Mm -hmm. How many refugees come to, let's talk about Jacksonville, Duval. Okay. Okay, Duval. Duval. <laughs> let's talk about That's Duval. Good. How many refugees come right here in Duval County? It changes every year, Jeff, but we, we think about, uh, on average, if you wanted to average it out, about 2,000 uh, refugees per year. per year, annually. Yeah, if we want right to average here, it out. If you want to average it right mm -hmm. here in our backyard. That's right. Yeah, right here in Jacksonville, um, you know, right here in our, within our city borders. It's a big city, but, yeah. um, but World Relief resettles about 500 of those refugees every year. And then we have other resettlement organizations, such as uh, Catholic Charities does an excellent job, Lutheran Social Services, and uh, these are other organizations that we actually sometimes partner with uh, to give better services and to make sure that every refugee has, uh, you know, the resettlement resources that they need. Okay, Trevor, let me ask you this. Just, just, just a, a question for our, our viewers. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between an immigrant mm. and a refugee? That's a great question, <laughs> and it's one that I answer a lot, and I'm happy to continue answering it because it's a really important thing to know. An immigrant is someone who, who immigrates or moves from their home country to another country, usually for economic reasons mm -hmm. um, or, you know, to reunite with family. Uh, he may say, you know, I, I, my dad is in this country, and I want to go be with my dad, you know. Or, you know, I got this job and I'm going to go immigrate to this other country to take this other job in another country. Refugees, on the other hand, uh, are fleeing. They're running quite literally for their lives uh, from social persecution, religious persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it could be any of these different reasons that they're running. But the, tr the truth is refugees don't choose to immigrate. They are forced to immigrate into another country. Man, that is good. What is the average time that someone would spend in a uh, safe camp? Mm, a refugee camp. Refugees yep. camp. Mm -hmm. Before they even make it to the States, not in Jacksonville. 
mm -hmm. but before they make it into the state. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, the reality is a lot of refugees, uh, some will spend their entire lives in a camp. So the most recent example we have, you know, is what's going on in Iraq and Syria. Uh, both countries are kind of caught in this turmoil uh, with ISIS. Everyone knows who ISIS is. And what happens is when these groups come in, um, you know, they, you either leave or you don't leave. You know, you risk staying. But most people choose to leave. And then, well, where do you go? You have to choose where you're going to go. Most people go to Jordan or they try to go south. Uh, but once you arrive in a place like Jordan, then you'll come to this camp, which could have uh, a million, two million people in it. And that's a lot of mouths to feed. That's yes, a lot yeah. of, of people uh, just, you know, in one concentrated area. And while they may be safe, um, you know, the, there's poor hygiene in these camps. There's not a lot of medical uh, resources there. There's not a lot of food there. Um, there's nothing really to do uh, there. There's no job or no purpose to your life. And most people, to answer your question, will spend... Uh, I know that we had a gentleman that came okay, to our office. Okay. We got to take a quick break. Oh, I apologize yeah. for cutting you off. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with more of World Relief and Traffic. Huts are made out of bamboos and then mud flow and it is it has a thatch roof thatch roof and uh, we have no proper bathroom Every day in southern Sudan Christian area was like in what happened to New York in September 11 because of our like Christian religion as well, the Burmese military like come to attack my village. You know? they like come with airplane and bomb up our village. You know? and finally like they like bend our village and we have to move to like Thailand. As uh, war and famine and different things that causes refugees to flee their own home country increases around the world, the refugee populations don't ever diminish. It's a very bad day, but when we came in the United States, it's just vast difference. It's not easy, but with time, things are getting better. We have a commission to reach out to the world, and instead of going out into the world, the world's coming right here to us. The church has an opportunity here to do what the church does best, and that's to be able to serve other people. It's such a wonderful opportunity to befriend them, to welcome them. Our families, particularly, have had a wonderful experience of integrating people right into their home lives. They bring a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of even uh, different religions, but we're still able to show them the kindness through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So for us, it's a perfect fit. To see, you know, people from the Sudan and, and Cuba and Iraq and Burma um, and all these other countries just coming off and a lot of them in their native attire, uh, I can just imagine what heaven will be like. Everything that we're about is to help these refugees not only become self-sufficient, but to be able to have, receive a witness of Christ shining through different people that we put them in contact with. It was never designed for one caseworker or one staff member to be everything to a family. We have to have the community, we have to have the church. I feel like I'm helping to bridge that connection between them, their culture and our culture. And there's something about that that just feels good to me. They need Americans to show them how to live in America. What is this? Chin. It was a lot more relaxed than I expected it to be. It was just coming into their home and getting to know them as a friend. I have gotten to hear more about their story and, you know, where they've come from. We don't have nothing. We are come with uh, just, you know, empty hand and they provide us many things. Refugees are survivors. They're tenacious. They are resilient. They figured out how to escape their own country and make it to America. They hit the ground running. They want to be self-sufficient. They want to be able to support their families. They want to have opportunity to start their lives over again. And all they need is just a little bit of push in the right direction, and then they go. It has been, you know, blessing to me 
my family. I've been able to meet good people, good friends. It's been great for the refugees that have come here, the, all the fo great folks through World Relief that have come here, and the company has also benefited. The values of World Relief align with the values of Marsh Furniture Company. We have a person from Iraq, his name is Hussein. He recently uh, got accepted to work over here, and he's working for three months. And he was uh, introduced uh, by uh, World Relief. This is the Newcomer School. Uh, we're a school that serves students in grades 3 through 12 who have recently arrived in the United States. A majority of our students are refugees. So much of what we do throughout the day, uh, we rely on World Relief and their staff. Definitely couldn't do our job without World Relief. When refugees arrive in the United States, they have so many different needs. And what we're looking for, people to come up and be able to lend a strong back, to help move furniture. People to go into people's homes and teach them how to cook and how to keep their modern apartment. Teach the children how to bounce a basketball, how to throw an American football. As believers are getting involved in the refugees' lives, the refugee often becomes the teacher in reminding us of just what Christ has done for us. So they teach us a lot. Local churches all over our region are embracing refugees, these victims of persecution. They're inviting them into their own communities, into their homes and into their lives. You can do mission work from the comfort of your own home. In fact, you can invite the world into the comfort of your own home. And World Relief has this opportunity to empower those local churches to serve these most vulnerable people groups right here in our own community. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with my friend, my brother in the Lord, we talk about world relief. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. We had to go to a break. No problem. But uh, mm -hmm. you were telling us to share with us about refugee camps. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully you didn't lose your thought. But uh, I still got it. <laughs> okay, come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was just saying um, that this is kind of the sad part. Whenever I do have to talk about um, you know the reality of the situation, I'm going to drop some statistics on on you. But um, if anything, I hope that these statistics help to wake up the church, you know, not just uh, the local church here in Jacksonville, but, you know, anywhere this is being seen. And um, the truth is most refugees spend decades in camps. I think the average stay in a camp is between 15 and 20 years. Lord, we man. did have a gentleman that came through that had been waiting 32 years uh, to come to America, and he finally got his chance, and we got to resettle him right here in Jacksonville. Um, last Tuesday, um, oh, I went and right. met a, a new new arrival and he said I said how long have you been waiting he was from uh, Ethiopia and uh, he had ran to Kenya and I said how long did you spend in the refugee camp in Kenya and he said 21 years and this is a this is a boy uh, I say a boy a young man and I said how old are you and he said I'm 21 and I said so you were born and he said I was born in, in, in Ethiopia and as a child that's when all the conflict was going on and so his parents ran with him as a newborn to Kenya so all he knows is refugee camp Lord and uh, so we we're working with him I got to take him out for his first Chick-fil-a the other day <laughs> and he loved it and um, and we're just making such good friends with him that's 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 amazing mm -hmm. Travis when you went over to Africa and when you was in the mission field mm. When you first saw those refugees, is it life changing? It is. It'll change your life. It'll it'll change your perspective. Really, is is what it'll do. It'll it'll remind you that uh, there's a pastor. M most people know him. His name is Francis Chan, and he he has a great simple analogy. And he takes a rope, and he colors about this much of the rope red, and he stretches it out, and he says, "We're living for eternity, right?" Right. And this little red color of the rope represents our life here on earth. And when you really, I mean, if we as Christians really are going to believe, you know, this, uh, this eternal uh, salvation 
thing, that we're going to live in eternity with God, then I think that we really have to take, take an inventory of what are we doing with our lives now? Yeah, who are, who are we good. impacting with our lives now? Yeah. What does that mean for the rest of this long, you know, eternal rope and this little bit that we have right here? And when I, you know, begin to see on TV what's going on, that's one thing. But when you go and you see it with your own eyes, your own eyes yeah. the, Christ rises up in you. I mean, you see through his eyes. And if you're a Christian, then there's compassion within you. Uh, but I think that we have to approach it with intelligence. I think we have to I approach agree. these issues with... Um, I agree with strategy and uh, you know there are organizations out there not just world relief there's many great organizations out there that are addressing this issue but uh, the reason I'm so comfortable with world relief is because you know we declare Christ and him crucified we declare Amen. that we are Christians you yeah. know and we serve Muslims Hindus Buddhists uh, here in Jacksonville and uh, you know we don't say you have to become a Christian before we'll help you uh, we believe that, you know, that we need to welcome them as uh, Christ likened himself to being yes. a stranger in Matthew 25. Yes, sir. You know, uh, Christ said, I was a stranger. He put himself in those shoes. And, um, Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I got another scripture I wanted to read that I think is pretty powerful. It comes out of Acts chapter 17. This is 26 and 27. And uh, he said, from one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And yes. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and perhaps that's find good. him. That's good, and so that's, that's our heart. Like if, any, if anything encapsulates what our heart at World Relief is, it is that. And, uh, you know, we are here to love people and to resettle refugees into this, uh, this great city we have in Jacksonville. Amen, amen. And one of the things um, I love about my brother uh, Travis and World Relief is something that we want to do here at JVD Ministries. And we're seeking for your help. This is the first time that I ever have done this, hmm. is asking for help from our viewers. I never asked for them to, uh, to send, um, um, to sow a seed. Oh, wow. into this ministry, but this is the first time I'm asking our viewers to go to my website, jbvshow.org, jbvshow.org, and give, so a see you. We are a 501c3 ministry. You can write it off, but give. We are committed, still committed, uh, drilling two wells in Haiti uh, mm. through this ministry. 100% of your proceeds go directly to World Relief, wow. go directly to the mission field, we don't keep a dime, a penny. I didn't know he was going to do this. I really didn't. <laughs> 100% of wow. your proceeds, if you just go to my website, hit give, put on the, on the field that is for World Relief or the whales in Haiti, 100%, uh, 100% go right wow. back to, to God the God bless you, man. Thank you. So um, I don't know how much time we have, but... Let's go back to the number. I think we still got a little few more time left. Yeah, I, I try to avoid the depressing numbers. But, <laughs> but, no, um, but one thing I like <laughs> about numbers, Travis, mm -hmm. number brings situation, it brings the, the, the thing to life. Yeah. When you see the numbers, mm -hmm. it, it really shows the magnitude of the situation. Yeah. You agree? I agree. It gives perspective, and, and sometimes people need that before they understand the gravity of things. But the truth is we have, uh, we had... 40 million people displaced in 2012, and that number is already almost up to 60 million. Wait a minute, say that again. 60 million with, a, with an M. Uh, and wow. that is people displaced uh, around the globe. So this is globally. Um, now the good news is World Relief, uh, we have been around since 1944. That's a long time. <laughs> wow. We've been around, uh, actually our first name was War Relief. We used to be called War Relief back in the 40s. And what was going on in the 40s? We had World War II was, yes. was winding down. And um, who didn't we like? We didn't like the Germans. We didn't like the Japanese. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know what's really cool? You know what God did during that time? And not a lot of people know this, but it's a really cool origin story about our organization. Um, some churches got together, I believe up north in, Bo in the Boston area. And they said, for Lent, we want to skip our meals and fast and put the money we would have spent toward eating to feeding who? German people, the Germans. And that. back then, that was kind of taboo. 
you know, because they were the enemy. But the truth is, after uh, the Allies got done bombing, you know, Germany, there was a lot of destruction. There's a lot of uh, homelessness. There's a lot of starvation going on. And the church said, you know what? We're going to love our enemies, you know. And the truth was, a lot of Germans didn't want to have anything to do with the, uh, you know, with the Nazis. And uh, so the church has said, we want to feed some people. Uh, with with our, our fasting. And they did. They fed around 200,000 uh, individuals. And this was a very <laughs> grassroots thing that just, you know, began to, to form. Uh, one thing led to another. It became uh, war relief. And over the years, it, it kind of morphed and transformed into world relief. And now uh, we are very honored to kind of be that middleman between the United Nations. A lot of people also ask, well, how do they come here? And the truth is the United Nations, uh, the UN, uh, get to choose who gets to come here. We don't go out and pick them and they, you know, bring them back. The truth is the UN goes into these camps. They conduct mm-hmm. very thorough interviews. I get a lot of people, you know, who have, um, you know, some fears about uh, terrorists getting through. We get that question a lot. And the truth is the UN uh, does con- conducts a very, um, very thorough, I would say, uh, now, the set UN, of interviews. The, the, the UN, I know a lot of people have, even now. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. The UN, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But are they really communicating and helpful with World Relief? Absolutely. They, they actually, it's the UNHCR, which stands for UN High Council of Refugees. Okay. And, um, and these are some very brave people. These are people that are on the ground over there. They're meeting with these refugees, uh, you know, in their environment, in their camps. Um, and they are conducting lots of interviews. They're wanting to get proof that you are a refugee you have to have paperwork and everything as well to prove that you're a refugee. And then the State Department, our State Department, wants uh, you know, some more questions. So you're talking about a three, four year process by the time it's all done, just to get the interviews over with. Wow, well I'm here with Trevor Trice, uh, Church Relation um, at World Relief. Uh, once again, um, we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Men's Closet, a one-stop shop for men's and boys' clothing, wants you to look good year-round with the best prices in town. Get two suits for $100. Stacy Adams suits, buy one, get one free. Are you big or tall? Men's Closet has all sizes and does alterations on site. Caps, clergy ropes, tuxedo rentals, we do it all, including casual wear like two-piece sets, just $39.99, or cargo shorts, two for $40. There isn't a look or style you can't get at Men's Closet. When you look good, we look good. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, just ask him to come to your heart. We believe just by confession, according to the scripture, we are saved by grace through faith. That's right. That's all. Just ask God to come to my heart and save my soul. And ask him. You don't have to do no church hopping. You don't have to look for or visit 20 churches. You just pray and ask God to send you to the right ministry. Mm -hmm. Travis, I want to say thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out once again to Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, the viewers in Georgia and Florida. I also want to give a shout out to Men's Closet. They have provided my wardrobe for today. Thank you. Let them know that I sent you. Y'all go give Men's Closet a shout out. Remember, repent, forgive, and live. And we see you next week. God bless.